Hey guys, welcome back to Matt Keeps Fish. It is entirely possible that I'm exhausted, and it's also entirely possible that I'm going to work an eight hour shift in just a minute. But what's super cool today is one of you guys, one of the subscribers, is actually picking up Anakin today, picking up the Anul. Because you live in the area, I'm not gonna say your name or where you live or anything like that, unless you want me to. Um, but he is picking up Anakin, super cool, and he's an awesome keeper. Like, it's it was so good to see someone who actually cared about the animals. We're also giving him the domes, the light bulbs, and the 10 gallon tank, because he had a five to begin with, and honestly, minimum, I'd say go 10, we had a 10. Seals are not great on it. Like, I probably wouldn't fill it up all the way again. This was the tank that Hope used to have. So I'm gonna give him the tank for the terrarium. I'm gonna give him the mesh as well. I'm, I'm thinking that uh, we'll like fold the mesh over the sides. You know, you guys know that I had like duct tape on the mesh here, but Anakin never even tried it. He just goes to the highest point and he's happy there. And once that back terrarium is sold, we can start moving components over to that little, whoop, that little terrarium there for the bugs. And I'm gonna have like a, a millipede terrarium. It's gonna be super cool. But for when that corner is empty, we can start filling it with water because it's going to be another aquarium. As you guys know, I've had some great ideas for that back corner, the front corner, and the middle. But things may have just gotten a little bit complicated. So stay tuned to hear about that. Okay, so eight hours later, well actually like 12 hours later, I'm back from work. And uh, now Hope and I are just tearing apart the 75 gallon and all that and just getting it ready to get Anakin out. Phone's about to die, so we'll check in later. All right, so we've got Anakin in a plastic container like he was when he was shipped to the store. And we're driving half an hour south to bring him to the new owner. We're bringing some driftwood. We're bringing some, some foliage. We don't have any substrate or anything like that because we're gonna be using that for the, the bug terrariums and that. So I think this guy is gonna do a good job of taking care of Anakin. I just wanted to give him a little bit extra because he's gonna be moving into the 10 gallon right away. And because he's giving me his five gallon, we're gonna use that for some other aquarium projects, probably breeding or stuff like that. All right, we are back and Anakin the Bahamana Knoll is in a new home. It looks like it's gonna be an awesome home. He took the 10 gallon, but I think he's gonna set up way more. And you're probably watching this video right now. So thank you for taking care of Anakin. And make sure to send me some pictures really soon because I can't wait to see what the new setup's going to look like. Now, we have that back corner cleared now, which means we can do whatever we want with all of the 75-gallon aquarium. It's all free aquarium space. So in the back there, we're going to get some new fish. I'm thinking definitely we're going to breed dwarf Mexican crayfish in there. I think that's a super cool idea because everyone's going to want them. And then some type of fish to swim on the surface. I was originally thinking of putting the limia in there, the humpback limia, which are doing great by the way. Uh, but now I'm thinking we're gonna put those in with toot my ribbed newt. And the reason that I was originally not gonna put them in there is because they, I, I thought they were gonna get eaten. You know, the coolie loaches had some scratches because toot was biting them every once in a while. But with these guys, they're constantly swimming and they're constantly at the surface as opposed to the coolie loaches, which are always on the same level as the newt and are not moving very often. Now also, we had some stuff going on with water issues. My water, you guys know, is historically very, very hard. But recently, my water got really, really soft. In fact, there's no minerals in it at all uh, in the recent tests. Now the pH is still very high, so it's not a complete swing, but it's the swing in the worst way because the minerals are what I really need. The pH can shift as much as it wants, just as, much, as long as it's not doing it often. So for someone who wants to breed hardwater fish and dwarf crayfish, having no minerals is not a very good thing. And I was gonna update you guys on this a while ago, but I think I have it figured out. Uh, there's different water sources in the house, so I was, I was actually using the tub to fill up my tanks, uh, the bathroom tub and uh, now I'm using the sink in the kitchen. So hopefully, apparently that has harder water, especially when it's on the colder setting. So hopefully that gets some minerals back in and we're able to bounce back a little bit. Further updates on the downstairs, the 40 gallon aquarium still has no fish in it. And I do mean that because our favorite bristlenose pleco has died mysteriously and suddenly. I was actually gonna get some shots of him on the day that he died and I kind of neglected to take shots the day before that but I woke up I came over to the aquarium 
and he was lying on his back absolutely stone cold dead. He still had his slime coat on, he still had all of his color. Honestly, I thought maybe this guy is still alive. But I checked for all the signs of life and this guy was indeed dead. His, uh, his gill spikes were all the way pointed out and they look really cool by the way pointed out like that you do not want to try and eat one of these guys they will tear your throat to pieces but while I was examining this guy I noticed that there was especially when I put paper towel on him to bury him and I did bury him I noticed that there was a blood spot right above his head now I'm not sure I know some animals will have like a light sensing eye on the top of their head I'm not sure if these guys have that but something was bleeding on the top of the head and I'm willing to bet this is what killed him I don't think that it's parasites. Parasites take a long time to kill and you, you'll you notice it unless it's the stress of the parasites that kill them. If it's the parasite itself, usually you'll notice it. You'll see them wasting away. You'll see them stop eating. You'll see, um, usually like you'll start seeing the parasites coming out of the body like we did when we had that big parasite crash a few months ago. But I didn't see any of that on this guy so I'm comfortable that we can still put fish in there. However, something did kill him, and I think that it was the ancient heater that we have in there. It's a very, very old heater. I think what happened is he was hiding behind it, like he does. He's a very shy fish, and either it uh, electrocuted him, or it just got too hot, and he decided he didn't want to move as it got hotter and hotter, and eventually um, broke through the skull or something like that with the heat. It could have like melted his brain. I'm not sure. I. All I know is that there was blood on the back of the head and he usually hides behind the heater and it's a very old heater so it's it's probably some connection of those things. So anyways now that those updates are kind of out of the way what is the big update? The big update was that I moved the reptile out now what am I going to do now that there's no more reptile in there? Well first of all I'm going to move to a completely different room. I don't know if you guys noticed while I've been walking around here but this is a completely new room that I moved into. We've just painted the walls recently and the ceiling and I've slowly been moving up the Lego. I have so much Lego guys. It's probably not as much as some of your collections but it's a lot for moving into a room like this. I've moved my bed up. I've moved the desks up. I've moved the little, ooh, the little terrarium up. I think it's gonna look really cool when it's done. But I'm very glad that I'm not doing this during the school year because it is a mess. Now like I mentioned earlier, next few videos probably going to turn this into a little millipede terrarium. I'm going to get it all set up. I'm going to put the little uh, drainage layer on the bottom. I'm going to have a lot of different uh, soil mixes in the middle. I'm going to get some eggshell in there. I'm going to make it perfect for millipedes to thrive in. And since these guys don't eat live plants, I'm also going to put some live plants in there. And it's right next to the window. Don't have to worry about algae obviously. So I think it could be really cool just to have like a little planted millipede terrarium right on my desk right there. Like I said, we're also gonna have some care guides coming up. We're gonna have some updates on the aquariums coming up. We're gonna have some new fish coming in. Hopefully we're gonna have a lot more time to spend with Zach and Josiah and all the people that you guys have seen in previous videos. And uh, yeah, so I hope that you guys enjoyed this short update on a bunch of random stuff. It will get more clear as things go on, but I just kind of had to give this interlude to show all the different routes that we're going to be taking in the next few months. So if you guys like this video, make sure you leave it a like. If you want to see more like this, make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you guys next Sunday.